the clone command copies, or clones, one area of blocks to another. Intriguing. I think it might be one of the most underutilized commands for building. It's quite similar to slash fill, but it has a strange tendency to feel hard to control? Obviously that makes no sense, a command will always do exactly what you tell it to do, but somehow the clone command always seems to elude people. In this video, I hope to change that so that you can become the fastest vanilla builder the world has ever seen. To start off, know that the clone command selects a cuboid just like slash fill does. If you know how slash fill works, that's great. But if you don't, say that you want to clone this blue cube. First, we have to select two opposite corners. For example, we could select these two red corners and it would select everything in between those two corners. So select your first block by typing slash clone and then tabbing in the coordinates that appear while you're looking at the block. Then you can hit enter and it'll tell you that your command is incomplete. That's fine, we're just saving it. Come over here, look at your opposite corner, open the chat and press the up arrow to get your command back. And now you can tab in the other corner and press enter yet again. After taking the coordinates of two opposite corners, the clone command takes a third set of coordinates for the destination. This is where people tend to go wrong. The destination will be the lowest XYZ coordinate in your selection. It doesn't matter which pair of corners you picked, it will always pick the lowest XYZ corner of your selection. Before cloning, you should always find out which corner this actually is. This means opening your F3 menu with F3 or function F3 on some computers. While it's open, your usual crosshair gets replaced by this axis thingy. These lines point in the positive X, Y, and Z directions, so the corner opposite where they're pointing is the one with the lowest coordinates. Then if you wanted to clone this cube to say here, you could just set this to be your destination, and since that was the lowest X, Y, Z coordinate, that is where the clone will start. This is all you need to start cloning things. However, there is more to the clone command than just this. Some of the options that come after can be very useful. After the destination, we can choose between filtered, masked, and replace. Replace is the default. It copies all blocks, including air blocks. Meaning, if you had built your beautiful house inside the cloned area, it will get deleted. Masked will not replace existing blocks when cloning. It will only replace air blocks, not blocks that are already there. Finally, filtered lets you clone only certain blocks. You can choose a specific block or a category of blocks. Categories are actually called block tags. You can tell something is a tag because it starts with a hashtag like this. For example, if I only wanted to clone yellow wool, not blue wool or red wool or green wool, I could use filtered, Minecraft, yellow wool. The final argument gives us the choice of force, move, or normal. If you use clone often enough, you might have seen this message. The source and destination areas cannot overlap. This is true in normal mode. In general, you probably don't want the source and destination to overlap because it could lead to accidental destruction of the source material. If you do want them to overlap, you can choose force to force the clone anyway. Move also allows overlaps, but it deletes the source afterwards. In other words, it moves it. This works with filters too, which is kind of cool. I'm not sure what that would be used for, but it's oddly satisfying. In my testing, I discovered a few interesting details about the clone command. First, it doesn't update block states. So if you clone a connecty block like a fence or a wall, it won't connect to its new surroundings. It does update blocks like sand and water though, so sadly, this is not a way to realize our floating block dreams. My biggest tip is to just pay very careful attention to where your lowest XYZ corner is. I messed it up several times while making this video, which just shows how funky it can be. Just remember, it's not the command's fault, it's yours. You can use this to make things like animated doors, working drawbridges, or, uh... There's a melon monster after me. <sighs> Still coming. <sighs> oh no. It, it, it's gonna catch me! Oh no! What will I do? Yes. No! That's my voice. No! We don't talk about the melon monster. I mentioned slash fill several times in this video. And I actually have a tutorial on it. 
check it out here. You can also check out one of my other excellent videos here. I wanted to have my younger self tell you to subscribe at the end of the video, but it turns out all I ever did was put this lame screen up. Remember to like, comment, subscribe.